Hey guys, welcome to a new video tutorial on how to use CGIFarm.com. I will explain how to prepare your 3ds Max project folder in order to be compatible with our rendering platform. I already prepared a project folder which is set up to work properly with our render farm. I'm going to open it and walk you through the necessary steps to make a 3ds Max project compatible with our platform. Basically, it's setting up the project to load the assets using relative paths to the project folder and not paths including the drive address, like g slash 3ds max project slash etc. I will show you in a second what I'm talking about. I'm using WinRAR to handle my zipping and unzipping. Make sure that your project folder is the root of the containing files and folders, so you won't have the 3ds max project folder inside of another folder. This will cause some issues when processing on our system. I will copy the path for this scene and set up 3ds max using this project folder. We support 3ds Max 2011 up to 2014 for now. We are planning to update to 2015 as soon as possible, but saving the scene, compatible from 3ds Max 2015 to 2014, will work just fine. After setting the path to my project folder, I open a scene to show you how to set up the asset's path and your render output. The textures are loaded fine without any errors and the animation plays all right. In the references asset tracking, you can see all the paths used in your scene. Here, you can see the current paths are relative to the project folder. I'm going to change the paths to the default configuration so you will see the entire setup process from the beginning. In the preferences, I will uncheck convert files to UNC and convert local file paths to relative. These options should be checked before zipping and sending the project to us, but I changed them in order to set up direct paths, which is the default option of max handling your assets. This is how the default paths will look if you're not using project folders. Because of the direct path containing your drive letter, it won't load the assets correctly on a different computer if the project folder is not exactly in the same place. In my case, on desktop, and having the username set up as Alex. Now, I'm going to change the paths back to relative. We'll check the options inside the preferences. Having also the compress on save option activated will speed up the file dispersing on our render farm making the save scene a bit smaller than usual. Selecting all the files using shift and left click, then right clicking and selecting make paths relative to project folder, will strip the drive address and you obtain relative paths. It's a simple step which needs to be done on each scene you have inside that project folder. On the render setup window, Make sure that you have the save file option active and that you have chosen an output path. If this option is not active, you won't be getting any frames out of your renders. We also support render elements. One thing that I want to mention is that the elements need to be saved in the same location as the main pass. They will be easily filtered by name in the final render file that you will download from us. As default, the output path for render elements is set up using the main output location. If you have any questions regarding the setup process, you can open a ticket and our support team will be happy to help you out with your issue. The last step is setting up the camera that you want to use for rendering. In the render setup window, you can see the active camera. If you are using multiple cameras in your scene, the best workflow is creating a scene for each camera, so you will submit them as separate jobs. Another issue that we found is that if you click the camera lock button, it creates some problems with our system. We are working to find a fix on this issue, but for now, leaving this button unchecked will work just fine. After these steps are completed, make sure you are saving the file compatible with 3ds Max 2014 or below. After all the scenes are saved using local paths, you can now zip the project folder and it's ready to be submitted on our system. For more references using project folder, you can also check the Autodesk 3ds Max documentation. Our system supports multiple scenes inside one project folder, 
and it's a good idea to submit all the scenes related to that project if you are sharing the same assets. In this way, you won't have to go through the upload step multiple times. Make sure that you will be using zip to compress the project folder. We do not support RAR or other compression methods. I'm back on the dashboard now, and I'm going to create a new package and begin uploading the zip file. On the Packages page, clicking on the plus sign will open a pop-up window. Each package should have a name. Try making it as descriptive as possible for future references. You can include things like camera name, scene take, location, software version, etc. On step two, you will choose the zip file containing the project folder, then click the start button to begin the upload process. A new package is created and the status of the upload is updated. While uploading the file, make sure that you won't close the dashboard web page. You can check other pages inside dashboard. If you close the tab with the dashboard during upload, you will need to restart the package creation process. After the file is uploaded, it will go into processing mode. After the project has finished processing, if there are no errors, your project is ready for render. You can also check the unzipped size of the package and make sure it matches the size you have on disk. This can also be a sign that everything went smoothly during the upload and processing states. Now that I have a package uploaded, I can create a render job for the package. Inside the jobs window, I click the plus sign which opens a configuration window where you add a name, select an available package, then a scene inside that package. For the frames, it's better to start rendering a few for testing purposes to see that everything is all right with your assets and your render output. If everything is good, you create a new job with the same scene, but with a different frame range. We have a few methods available of selecting the frames to render, which are available in the text documentation of this tutorial. So make sure that you check it out. After you completed all the fields, clicking the Create button will submit the job in queue. As soon as we have render nodes available, your job will start rendering and the frames will start appearing. You will have the option to pause the job so it won't render other frames until you resume it. Or, you can delete the job, which will also delete all the finished frames, so be careful when using the delete button. On each job, you have available statistics like completed frames, render time, costs, and the job status, which can be active, paused, or completed. After a frame is completed, two new buttons will appear. The first one is to download all the rendered frames for that particular job. The blue one will open a window to display all the frames and the render stats. In my case, the CPU usage is quite low, as the scene is pretty simple and it takes only 25 seconds to render. On more complex scenes, the usage will increase. The cost is calculated by the number of cores, the usage percentage, multiplied by the time it took to render the frame. We are not counting the virtual cores as working cores. They increase the efficiency of the physical cores, but in our algorithm, only physical cores are calculated. After the job is completed, a notification will appear in the right top corner. If you want to clear the notifications, just hit the Dismiss All button. You can download the frames as individual or all at once. When choosing to download a single frame, the passes will be also included in the downloaded zip file. We are adding a watermark on the frames, which were rendered using a demo account. To remove that watermark, you will need to activate your account by purchasing a credit plan. The watermark is added on JPEG and PNG files. If you render a scene with unsupported formats for watermarking, they won't become available for download until you activate your account. Now, I will show you how to receive all the frames if you choose to download everything, instead of going frame by frame in the download process. This should cover the process of job submitting for 3ds Max. The process for submitting jobs for other software is similar, but I will cover the software list just in case to avoid any misunderstandings. Before I finish this video, I want to stress to you again to pay attention on the delete function. You will get a message asking if you really want to delete the job or the package, which will delete everything afferent. So if you have multiple jobs already rendered, deleting the package will also delete the jobs and the frames that have already been rendered. So be careful. Other than that, I hope that you will enjoy using our system. Feel free to send us any critiques or features that you would like to see implemented into our system. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check the text version of this tutorial. CGIFarm.com